A Preface to Lao Silences. From Sunday, April 18, 1954, until Monday, April 10, 1995, Ajahn Noisy of Salavan, who greatly preferred his anonymity, meticulously maintained his cramped notes in slim notebooks, considering almost 32,567 distinctly Lao silences he had known. Some were rare as a harvest moon at midnight in Ponsavan. Some were particular to his wife, a saint of patience from Paxe, who laughed loud and long every female Lao with her lovely sisters. Why he kept such ridiculous records were anybody's guess. There was a mention of a silence when the gun stopped firing by the Mekong, and their first foot touched a Thai shoreline. There were plenty of entries regarding a hush for safety, a moment after relieved sighs. Some lasted only a second. A few seemed to last years upon years until it seemed a career. He remembered the end to a beloved Lao tune no one sings anymore, and thus half drunk among lifetime friends. There are his remarks about the quiet before the planes came from above, the slightly broken silence that came with a scent of smoke while everyone huddled together for hours, shaking. Ajahn Noy thought the silence remarkable in his American living room before their first TV was brought in. There was the silence of the knowing and the dead. There was the silence when the time was right. There was the silence when the time was wrong. There was a silence of delight and one of grief, one of memory and one of forgetting. There were volumes upon volumes that a silence only Passa Lao could explain. I had no words as I watched his family burn those books one final autumn afternoon, thinking their father an unremarkable fool.